Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 26 has hundreds and hundreds of new features, but some of those features are hidden or hard to find. So I thought we'd go over 10 or more features that are hidden to help you get the most out of iOS 26. The first thing is navigation. If we go into settings and maybe go down to general, we can now swipe back from anywhere on the display. Prior to iOS 26, you would have to swipe back from the corner or from the edge or tap the back button here. So instead you can just maybe go into software updates, swipe back and you're back to where you started. Go into another option, swipe back and you don't have to utilize the edge of the display anymore. You can just swipe from wherever. So it just makes it a little bit easier. And if you weren't familiar with iOS, hopefully that helps you out. The next thing has to do with background sounds. If we go down into accessibility, then we scroll down to audio and visual. Under audio and visual, we have background sounds. These are nice to play sometimes if you just need some ambient music or you need something on in the background. You'll see our options here with things such as balanced noise, rain, stream, night, fire, and others. But now we have the option to stop this. Maybe we want to start it now and stop it in an hour or so. We can now do that. So you'll see if we scroll down, we have stop sounds with a timer. If we go into this option, we can turn on the timer and now we can stop it at a specific time after an amount of time or always use these settings. So anytime you use a background sound, maybe you want it to stop after three hours, you're falling asleep to some background noise, you can have it turn off on its own. So that's a nice feature to have on if you're going to use background sounds. There's a couple things I wanted to share within the phone app that you may not be aware of. If we go into phone, Go to recents, you'll see all of your recents here, but go to missed in particular. Maybe you need to call someone back, but you don't want to do it right now. If we slide over, we now have the timer option where we can select for it to remind us. So we can have it remind us in an hour, tonight, tomorrow, or later, and then we can set the date or time and add notes. So we can have it repeat and add it to a list within reminders. This is super helpful if maybe you need to return a call, but just don't have time to do it right now. Also, if you want to delete a bunch of these, instead of going to edit and selecting individually, you can now use two fingers and drag down just like you can in mail. So select just like that, tap delete, and they go away. So you can select them very quickly and handle those very fast instead of deleting one at a time like this. It's super helpful and something that's not easily discoverable. Now the next thing has to do with messages. If we go into messages and maybe we want some text that we saw earlier, we want to use that somewhere else. We can press and hold and now go to select. And now we can select the exact text that we wanted prior to this update. It wasn't this simple. You had to select all of it. Now you can sort of select any word or whatever you'd like. You may have already noticed too, if you press on this, you'll have the option to translate. So if you want to translate something someone sent to you, this is available as well on supported devices. There's also a new draft folder if you've maybe started to type a message and you didn't send it, or maybe you forgot to send it. If we go back to our main message screen, within the main message screen in the upper right, we have our options. And if we go into our options, you'll see the option for drafts. If we go into drafts, you'll see that I started to type something to Steve. You'll see here, it says, Hey Steve, what do you think about the M5 iPad leaks? So we can send this now, or it just saves it in drafts. Maybe I want to think about what I want to send, give it some time. I can come back to that folder and change it later. Now, oftentimes when you're within the messages app, maybe you want to take a photo and you want to save that photo later. So we'll use the camera. Maybe we'll just take a photo of the iPhone 17 pro and we'll go ahead and it'll save right here. And there we go. We'll send it. And maybe we want this to save to photos. We can now do that with an option. So before it didn't automatically save into your photos themselves, you would have to do it manually, press and hold, and then save it this way. However, now you can have it do it automatically. Go into your settings. We'll scroll down to camera within camera. You'll see if we scroll down, keep scrolling down, you'll see that we have the option at the very bottom under messages where it says save captures to photo library, automatically save captures taken in messages, camera to the photo library. So now it will automatically save and you'll find it there. So if we go into photos, you'll see within photos, here's the photo I took. That's also in messages as well. And also back in messages, maybe we want to set the background to something different based on a photo, press and hold on the photo, and then you can scroll down and set as background. So you now have the option. You can set it as background. You can change a filter, black or white duo tone, color wash, and then back to original here. So we can pinch and crop and everything else. So you can simply save a photo that's in your messages directly as the background. So we'll save it. And there we have it.
there's a really helpful setting that you may not know exists that can be helpful if you plug your iPhone into another device. If we go into settings, we'll scroll down to where we have privacy and security, and then we'll scroll all the way to the bottom. At the very bottom under security, you'll see it says wired accessories automatically allow when unlocked. We have a few options here. It says allow accessories to connect and we can always ask. We can ask for new accessories. We can automatically allow when unlocked or always allow. For example, if I turn it to always ask, I'll plug it into my iMac that's right here and it should ask me right now if I want to allow it to connect. So that's a safety prompt that you can leave there all the time or just have it automatically allow when unlocked and then you can just plug it in as you need or always allow. You still may need to verify and trust the computer. Once you do that once, it should continue to allow you to connect to it though. Now it's great to keep your iPhone safe by customizing settings, but keeping your personal data safe is also something you'll want to do and the way I do that is with a service from today's sponsor, Incogni. Our personal data seems to constantly be accidentally leaked over and over or retrieved in data breaches, leaving your personal information exposed across various websites. Data brokers buy and sell this information, spreading your personal information all over the internet. Incogni helps track down and remove your personal data from multiple sites, such as online directories, commercial databases, people's search sites, and more. You can also use Incogni's custom removal feature to take down almost everything that is exposed about you online. Just send them a link where you found your information you want removed and a dedicated privacy expert will handle the rest. All you have to do is complete three easy steps. First, sign up, then authorize Incogni to remove your data, and then the removal process begins. Within minutes of signing up with my information, Incogni had already identified 10 websites with my information and sent removal requests. Now, after using Incogni for months, over 1,000 removals have been made on my behalf, saving me hundreds and hundreds of hours of my time trying to remove that data manually. You can see I have 1,218 total requests sent, 146 in progress, and 1,072 completed. It saved me 804 hours. Incogni also has a proven track record and is the only personal data removal service to be independently verified by Deloitte. Take your personal data back with Incogni, use code Zolotech at the link below, and get 60% off an annual plan. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Now the next thing has to do with photos. Within photos, if I go into videos and search for something specific, you'll see it finds other things, but I put in oil and Yamaha and it will find the specific frame that it jumps right to it where it sees that. So you can see that here where it found it within this blue section within the video. This is where I was changing the oil in a wave runner and you can see it right here. So if you're searching for something specific, it found it within this blue section where it said Yamaha and it looked like I was changing the oil. If we go into this screen recording that I had where I was trying to show a different shortcut and that it doesn't work properly, I wanted to show you that you can actually change the frame rate of this. If we go into edit, then we go to the little timer in the upper right, we have the option to change it from 30 frames per second to 100 frames per second. Now this technically is not new with iOS 26, but I didn't even realize it was here in iOS 18. So you can do this with video as well. You've been able to do it for a while, but you can also do this with your screenshots. Now, if we go into Safari, there's a couple things I wanted to share with you that might make this a little bit easier. They changed the overall layout, and of course you can customize this. I've talked about that at length in other videos. However, maybe you want to go to your tabs and you find it a pain to tap the three dot menu and then tap all tabs. You can simply go into it by double tapping on the three dot menu. So that makes that a little bit quicker and you can just jump right into it. You can also do this a couple different ways. So for example, if we tap on here, we can just swipe up on the address bar and get right to our bookmarks. So we can swipe up here right into our bookmarks instead of having to double tap or tap a couple times to get to them as well. Also within the tabs, once we're in a tab, if we press and hold, we have the option to duplicate a tab. So maybe we want to open something similar and look at something else while we save one here. We can do that and it's duplicated the tab. We also have a view where you can change it in the menu in the upper left here. If we go up here, we can now arrange this as well. So if we go to arrange tabs by, we can arrange it by title or by website. So if you want to change this to whatever works for you, you can arrange this again by title or website and just modify it for however works best for you. But hopefully that helps you get into that a little bit quicker, double tap or just swipe up from the address bar. If we go into the files app, they're making it more and more useful. So within files, you'll see we have a bunch of different folders here. Maybe we want to change the icon that's on the outside of the folder. So we'll press and hold 
Then we can go down to customize folder and tags, and this helps you find them a little bit easier as well. So within tags, maybe we want to change this to red. We could also customize this and maybe make it purple and red tap the check button there. And now we're good to go. And it's customizing it based on categories that are purple or red. Again, if we press and hold, we can customize again and then put a glyph or maybe an emoji on it. So if we scroll down, maybe we want it for activities or maybe we just want it for a symbol. We'll just put maybe a little eye on it for information. And then of course we can modify this again. We'll just leave it red and now it categorizes it. And we have a little eye for information on there. So it's super helpful. And another thing you can do is if you press and hold on a file, you'll see that we have the option to open with, we can now customize what it opens with every time. So if we want to preview it with quick look, we can do that or have it specifically open in another app when we tap on that type of file. So if you wanted to open up maybe an MP3 in Luma fusion, you can do that. Within maps, we have a new option in iOS 26 for visited places. You'll see that I have places here, places I've gone regularly or in different times, we can add them to show up regularly and it can learn based on where you're at. It's completely on device and you can turn it off as well. I'll show you that in a moment, but if we tap on my account here, then we go to places and within visited places, if we go into this, you can see some places I've been in the United States. And if we scroll down, we can actually see some of those places. So some Apple stores, regular camera store nearby and other places. Now we can delete these if we want, remove them or share them, or we can turn this off. But sometimes it could suggest maybe, maybe you're nearby something you like. It could pop on your screen and suggest maybe you want to go to one of these places. I find it useful. Again, it's all on device, but you can completely turn it off and disable it. If we go into our settings here, we'll go down to again, privacy and security this time under location services, and then we'll scroll down to maps. So just scroll down until you get to maps and then scroll down again. And you'll see at the bottom, it says visited places, allow apps to access places you visit throughout the day started sharing June 10th. If we turn this off now, it's not going to have that. We're not going to have visited places and it won't continue to track that or keep any record of it whatsoever. So if we go back into maps and you'll see under maps, it says, see where you've been, let maps keep track of the places you visit. So again, if you want to keep that disabled, you can, if you want to enable it, you can, and it will help you maybe find places you like to visit regularly. Now, if we go into the wallet app within wallet, we have a new option at the top, tap the little card here that says one, two, three. Once it verifies with you, you now have the option to add physical card information. It says Apple may use the last four digits of your physical card to help you identify transactions. Your full card number, expiration date, and security code are encrypted and stored in your iCloud keychain. They are visible only to you and not used for Apple Pay transactions. So maybe you need your security code. You forget it all the time. You don't have your card with you. You can add it here just for a reminder. And you'll see if you tap on it, it actually asks you to scan the card. It will save that information for you and just make it easier to reference if you want to come back to this. So I find this super helpful if maybe you need to reference your code often or maybe some information from your card. Now, one thing that you may want to try if maybe you have an Apple case specifically is go into your customization settings on your home screen, go to edit go to customize, go down to where we have tinted and you'll see a new option that looks like a phone or a case tap on that option. And now you'll see, we have clear icons or sort of an orange color that's trying to match here. But if we place this case on the phone, so this is a tech woven case from Apple, you'll see it's on the phone. It recognizes it as the blue case. And if we swipe up and go home, everything tints to match it. So it's not exactly the same tint, but it will tint to match the case that you have. So if you swap this between an orange case or something else, it switches between this or black and other cases. So it's really nice to have that option. So if you want to use something a little more colorful, so I've removed the blue case. Let's go ahead and swap it to a green case here. Again, a tech woven case from Apple. It should recognize that it's green. Give it a second there. It connects to the phone. And if we swipe up, you'll see that it tints green to sort of match the case. So this is something you can do with any Apple case. Hopefully they make it accessible to third party cases as well. But I think it's a really nice option. If maybe you're using an Apple case just to make it a little bit more unique. So those are a bunch of new hidden features or hard to find features in iOS 26. Hopefully they helped you out. Let me know if you've heard of any of them or all of them. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.